and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I am so glad you are here today. I want to talk about messiness today, the messiness of human emotions, the messiness of our teams, our colleagues, our employees. We're all messy. And at some point, we have had to deal with messy and emotional people in the workplace. And how we handle this is really important as leaders because if we step into it, we can really help make an ugly or emotional situation better. So that's what I want to talk about with you today. Look, we all are messy. Human beings are messy, emotional creatures. We all feel anxiety, anger, fear, defensiveness at points in our lives. And often we give in to these strong emotions. It gets even messier when we have these emotional outbursts in the workplace, which can happen quite often. At some point, every leader must handle a situation where an employee is angry or upset. How they deal with this emotional outburst is crucial to maintaining a positive working environment. And if done right, it can positively change the trajectory of the employee's experience. But let's face it, it can be overwhelming to work through an emotionally charged situation with an employee, and it's easy to make things worse. The stakes are high and a negative interaction could cause the employee to feel unheard or uncared for, decreasing overall satisfaction and could result in the person leaving the company. Leaders need to approach human messiness with empathy, care, and some self-reflection. Leaders are flawed human beings, just like everyone else, but some of us are afraid to admit it. We have personal, family, and mental health issues, and we too are messy. Sure, it's easy to hide behind statements like, everyone needs to leave their personal stuff at home, but who can really do that? And is it fair to expect for people not to show up as their whole selves? Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't hold people to high expectations, nor should we tolerate bad behavior, but we can offer employees support and compassion as they go through messy times. I know I've benefited from the kind of leaders who've helped me through my roughest periods of life, and I'm really incredibly grateful for that. Appropriately connecting and communicating with an upset employee is essential to turning around the situation effectively. So here are my tips on how you can help manage highly emotional situations in the workplace. Stay calm. The best thing you can do is let the person be emotional. Let them express their feelings. Take a few deep breaths to keep yourself from getting amped up. The last thing the person needs for you is to match their intensity or for you to try it to end the conversation as quickly as possible because you feel uncomfortable. Next, show concern and listen. Make eye contact, lean forward, and listen to what the person is telling you. Avoid interjecting too soon. If the person is crying, just hand them a tissue. Be personable and professional, show empathy, and don't judge or make the person feel bad about having an emotional outburst. That doesn't help anybody. Next, get to the facts. Most people make incorrect conclusions about why a particular situation is happening, so it's essential to get to the facts. For example, if your employee might say, I can't deal with Larry anymore. He's condescending and he's always picking apart my work. He's a jerk and I am ready to walk out and never come back. Your natural inclination might be to agree or disagree, but instead try saying, tell me exactly what happened so I can understand the facts. Getting back to the facts helps others step away from their conclusions and provides you with the details you need to resolve the problem eventually. Then resolve the problem. Once you get the facts and the person is calmer, let them know that you want to help them resolve the issue. Discuss a path forward, making specific agreements on how each of you will handle the situation. Be sure to have a clear follow-up plan so that the issue does not go unresolved. That's very important. Do not sweep messiness under the rug. Keep it private. Creating a scene is never helpful. Allow the person to have their emotional outburst privately. Move into a quiet office or go for a walk so that coworkers don't witness what's happening. Allow the person time to collect themselves before going back to work. And if necessary, allow them to go home. Offer to collect any personal belongings if they don't want to face coworkers in that moment. It's always embarrassing when you walk in with red eyes because you've been crying. Help an employee out. Those are my tips. A simple plan to de-escalate an emotional situation. If done right, both you and your employee will walk away feeling better and more optimistic about finding a resolution. 
Now, there are some other things to keep in mind when dealing with an emotionally charged employee. I recommend that you do not do these things. Don't let an employee go home angry. Even if you don't resolve the issue before they leave, it's important to acknowledge the situation and de-escalate the emotional response. It's far better to have them go home feeling heard. Don't correct minor details. When a person is upset, it's not helpful to change unimportant details in their narrative. Does it really matter what happened that it happened on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday? I don't think so. Don't quote policy. No one wants to hear, well, it's company policy when they are angry or upset. This will only make a bad situation worse. And finally, don't tell the employee to calm down. This almost always adds fuel to the fire as it can come across as condescending and uncaring. All right, hopefully those tips are helpful. Now on to the question of the episode. The question of the episode comes via LinkedIn. Carrie, I have an employee who I need to give tough feedback to, but he's a single thread. If he takes it the wrong way and leaves, I'm screwed and the company is screwed. What should I do? Great question. I have been there more times than I want to admit. Having a single thread, an employee who is the only person in your company who can do that job is definitely a risk. So first I would say everyone needs feedback to improve and withholding feedback from this person keeps them from from performing better and making improvements. So they deserve to hear the feedback. Second, practice what you want to say. At Stone Age, we use Kim Scott's radical candor model, challenge directly, but do it in a way that shows you care. Write out the feedback so that's clear, specific, helpful, and kind, but don't be afraid to give it. The fear is probably in your head and what you think is going to happen probably won't. When you do give the feedback, don't be afraid to be a bit vulnerable. And it's also good to offer help. You can say something like this. Giving you this feedback is very difficult for me to do. I value the work you do and appreciate everything you bring to the table, but I want to share some things that I've been noticing and offer my help. Then give the feedback directly. Always use facts and effects. Never make it about their person or their personality. No one wants to hear, well, you did this because you are this way. Finally, address the single thread issue, especially in a critical role. You cannot let an employee hold you hostage because they are the only person in the organization who can do what they do. Have a backup plan, engage with a contractor or consultant who can support this person's efforts or hire someone junior and develop them alongside this key person. Allowing a single thread can be devastating to the company if they leave, and it's our job as leaders to minimize this risk. But don't minimize the risk by letting a single thread employee underperform or exhibit toxic behavior. What you allow is what you become. All right, that is Reflect Forward today. I hope it was very helpful. I love these advice from the CEO. I've been getting very good responses to them. So please, please send me questions. I would love to hear from you. And if you like this podcast, please like, subscribe, share, rate. It helps improve my standings on all the podcast platforms and is very helpful. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you next week.